Hello again. My name is David Roberts, and along with my wife Elaine, we are heading up a new gathering of people in Kettering, Northamptonshire, as part of the Vineyard Church movement. We are linked to Central Vineyard Church in Northampton and to a family of churches across the UK and the world. If this is your first contact with us, we'd like to welcome you warmly and hope that you find this talk helpful. We are trying to explain who we are, what our values are and what our vision is for the future. Last time in the first of this series of three talks, I spoke about the roots of our church movement and introduced us to the vineyard person. This is a visual representation of the values and priorities that we hold as important to what we are trying to achieve here in Kettering. If you missed that talk, go to the Central Vineyard YouTube channel and search for the vineyard person. I spent some time last time talking about the fact that church, in its original sense, means a gathering of people rather than a building that people go to at different times. We want it to be a place where people connect with God and each other, learn to get along and bring the light of God into our broken world. A place where people can be refreshed by the living water that God promises and find the God who makes himself available to anyone who seeks for him. I then spent some time outlining the foundations of our values that our values are built on, particularly the importance of God's word in the Bible. I briefly mentioned the kingdom of God as part of the foundations and we'll spend a bit more time on this today. We want to be a place where we enter into and work out the kingdom of God in our daily lives. I then explained that the idea of a church as a body is not something new. The Bible frequently talks about the fact that we're all interconnected with each other, like all the organs and limbs of a human body are. If one part is not functioning well, the whole body is affected. Last time I talked about the head, we grow up into the head, into Christ, as it says in Ephesians 4 verse 15. We are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, builds itself up in love. Today I'm going to look at the arms and legs of the body, and next time we'll talk about the idea that the church is a community, a hospital, a school, an army. These values underpin our vision, priorities and activities as a church. They tell us about our DNA. But first, let's consider that other feature of our basic foundations, the kingdom of God. Derek Morphew, a vineyard theologian, says this. Jesus came announcing the kingdom. His parables explained the kingdom and his miracles bore witness to its presence. In fact, the theme of the kingdom as preached by Jesus Christ unites the whole flow of biblical truth from Moses through the prophets, the writings, the gospels, the epistles and the revelation of John. Forty years ago, hardly anyone was talking about the kingdom of God, even though it was the most common theme of the teaching of Jesus himself. Much of the teaching of evangelical churches has been about the good news that Jesus has forgiven our sins so that we can be accepted into heaven when we die. Many of the songs we sing reflect on this. We accept Jesus as our saviour and we are set free from the penalty and punishment for all the wrong things that we have done. But there's something missing in this narrative. Of course, it is true that Jesus died to forgive us our sins. Of course, it is true that we can trust him for eternal salvation. Of course, it is about knowing Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. But there is something more. The good news of the kingdom that Jesus preaches is rooted in his understanding that God wants to restore his rule and reign over the world that he has created. The world that we have damaged by our choices to rebel against God's plans for our lives. Kingdom literally means the realm of his ruling, 
he takes his place as king over all creation. 1 Corinthians 15 says this, But in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. The kingdom is about restoring the reign and rule of God over the whole of creation. Right from the beginning of the Bible, God wanted mankind to rule over creation as his co-rulers. And although a large part of the story of the Bible and all religion is about how humans have tried and failed to put themselves right with God, the message of the gospel is that Jesus has done this for us. That is why he could speak to sickness and banish it. Speak to demons and set people free. Turn water into wine, calm the storm, walk on water. Feed thousands with a young boy's packed lunch. Jesus could see things from a heavenly perspective and bring all the power and manifestation of heaven to bear on a world he lived in. And when he died a horribly painful death on the cross, ultimately death could not hold him and he broke the chains of death and hell. And as he subsequently inaugurated the early church, he delivered to the first disciples the power and authority to bring the kingdom of heaven upon earth. To bring the rule of God to bear on the world that they lived in. And he is still doing this today. Derek Morphew says this. The coming of the kingdom involves God's intervention in the course of, of human history. His power breaks into the affairs of men, confronting the forces that withstand him and imprison people and interrupt the normal course of society. The church lives by the powers of the future age while the powers of this age continue around us. The kingdom calls to us from the future and breaks in on us with a final summons. So this distinctive of the kingdom of God, the thing that Jesus taught about more than anything else, is fundamental to what we believe as a vineyard church. Four statements encapsulate New Testament teaching about the kingdom of God. And these are they. The kingdom of God will come. The kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God is coming immediately. The kingdom of God will be delayed. I don't have time today to dig deep into these statements, but Jesus referred to himself in this way, quoting Isaiah. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. The Apostle John wrote that Jesus came to bring eternal life, but what do we understand by that? This coming age, Ionian, eternal, is different to the age we currently live in. We go about our daily business, living our lives in the best way that we can. The kingdoms that exist now are of human origin, corrupt and consigned to divine judgment. But the kingdom that is coming is the work of God. It is eternal. We see it breaking in, in the death and resurrection of Jesus, in his ascension and in the outpouring of the Spirit at Pentecost. And the breaking in of the kingdom of God expresses the life and power of the age eternal into our current world.
We see this when the light and truth of the gospel sparks new life in a believer. We see it when people experience forgiveness for their sins. When people are filled with the Holy Spirit and their lives are gradually transformed. We see it when people begin to express the gifts and fruit of the Spirit in their lives. We see it when prayers are answered, when the power of God banishes sickness and when people are set free from addictions and controlling spirits. We see it when God's justice breaks through to set people free from poverty and captivity. And yet there is an aspect of the kingdom of God that is a mystery. There seem to be moments when we see it here and at other times when it seems not to break through. Our prayers can seem to be unanswered. There seems to be a delay in the coming of the kingdom. How on earth do we understand this? In Mark chapter 1 verse 15 it says, Jesus came proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. This is translated in different versions as the kingdom of God is upon you or at hand or near. There is a sense that the kingdom has come and yet will come in the future. As Derek Morphew puts it, the kingdom is already here, but not yet here. The two ages coexist. The age to come is present, but the present age has not yet ended. Of course, when Jesus returns, the full and final reign of God will be restored. But we live in an in-between age where we see sometimes the kingdom breaking in and yet there is more to come. Perhaps this is why Jesus taught his disciples to pray, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we pray, we draw heaven, the age to come, into the situations we are praying for. Derek Morphew again. The mystery of the kingdom is the key to understanding the New Testament and the Christian life. It is the only perspective from which one can understand why healing occurs sometimes, but not at other times. It is the basis of the Christian experience in this world. We are simultaneously new creatures in Christ, with new natures, and also those who have to struggle with the old man and its continual reasserting of its influence in our lives. We are glorious contradictions, at the same time victorious in Christ and beset with weakness. And this is also true of the church. The church is militant and yet frail. There is a continual struggle between the city of God and the city of man. Yet at every point the powers of the age to come are overcoming the powers of this present age. The new man in us is taking over the old man. I've spent a lot of time trying to explain this and I hope that I've made some sense of it. I'm sure we'll discuss this further, but I hope that it helps you to understand the perspective of the kingdom of God as one of the principal foundations on which we build. I want to turn back briefly to the vineyard person and say a few words about what you can see in the arms and legs. Prioritise the expression of the life of God in us is to show compassion and mercy towards those whose lives are broken and in despair. While we currently don't have capacity to organise big projects, a number of people are involved in ministries that give practical help to those who are struggling. For instance, food bank and services to the homeless. We have connections with our parent church in Northampton and would love to see an outpost of their Restore project, including Grow Baby here in Kettering. And we will make it one of our top priorities to increase this sort of compassion ministry in our town. Another of the distinctive features of a vineyard church is our focus on worship and intimacy with Jesus. We set our hearts to seek God and draw closer in relationship to him. We do this through worship, through our songs and praise, through cultivating an attitude of gratitude to him and expressing it in our words and music. We also emphasise spiritual practices like silence and contemplation to enable our relationship with God to grow. 
Have a look at this photograph. What can you see? Maybe it's not entirely clear, but this is a cucumber plant in our summer house. You can actually see one or two cucumbers growing off the stems. But there's something else I'd like to see if you can see. If I was standing in front of you, I would be looking for feedback, but as I'm not, I'm going to have to put you out of your confusion. I reckon most of you will have been thinking, what on earth is he on about? It illustrates the fact that when you've got your focus on one thing, one aspect of a picture or situation, it's very difficult to see a different perspective. So, what do you see now? Well, it's the trellis. I set up some canes and tied them together to act as a frame for the plant to grow up. Without it, the plant would probably have failed to bear fruit. This year is actually the first time I've been successful in growing cucumbers, and my intuition is that the trellis has played a significant part in its fruitfulness. The ancient church fathers and mothers used to describe a rule of life that they recommended to their followers. In fact, the rule, in Latin regula, we would translate as trellis. So the rule of life, the spiritual disciplines, if you like, trellis, acts as a frame through which our spiritual lives can grow and bear fruit. There are many different ones, but perhaps the most obvious would be worship, prayer and feeding our souls on the word of God, the scriptures. The arms of the vineyard person are a little more difficult to explain. To be honest, the term church planting doesn't quite express what I want to say, and we are less focused on the growth of the vineyard than we are on the extension of the kingdom of God into the lives of those who don't yet know Jesus. So perhaps better would be to call this mission or outreach. Our world is full of broken and desperate people who are searching for meaning in life or for some sort of connection with their creator. Why else do people run after different religions and the occult? We want to press in to reaching out to those around us who are searching for God and those in need of salvation. The final priority I want to address briefly, you'll be glad to hear, is church renewal. Last time I explained that we are just one part of God's wider church. We want to value and honour our brothers and sisters in other churches and to work towards unity in the wider body of Christ. We want to learn from others and we have been so blessed by God in what he has given us that we want to share that blessing freely with others so that they can be renewed and built up. In particular, we pray for and bless wherever we see God working out his kingdom purposes in and through other church congregations. So that brings me to the end for today. Next time I will talk a little more about what it means to have Christ as our head and also about the functions of the church as expressions of the kingdom of God in healing people, training people, growing together in community and serving together. So if you'd like further information, please don't hesitate to contact us through our church website, centralvineyard.co.uk. Specify Kettering, we would love to hear from you. 